Okay, so we're looking at how you would solve one, solve for one of the variables in an equation such as these. Um, when you deal with solving a gas law problem, you need to identify which equation fits the calculation, and then which variables you have and which variable you need to solve for. So those things are covered in other videos. This video deals with once you've decided you're going to solve for a particular variable, be it this one, this one, this one, or this one, whatever it may be, how do you actually algebraically go about doing that? How do you solve for a variable? So let's look at that. So let's just uh, pick something just to talk about the basic algebra of it. Maybe uh, this variable right here, why not? So suppose you've chosen this equation to solve a question, and then you realize you need to solve for P2. Okay, let's talk about the algebra behind that. In order to do that, you need to, if you're going to solve for what something is, you want to find what pressure 2 is, you need to get that variable by itself, which means this variable needs to, needs to be on the other side of the equation, or should I say on the other side of the equal sign. So in order to do that, you need to do something to the equation, but it's very important to remember that what you do to one side must also be done to the other. So... In the case of something like this, we have multiplication happening between pre pressure 2 and volume 2. So in order to get volume 2 out of here and over here, I'm going to divide both sides by volume 2. So I'm going to rewrite it over here to show you what I'm doing. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And I'm going to divide both sides by V2 in order to get it out of here because I'm trying to find this variable right here. But that means, of course, dividing both sides by V2. Now, when I do that, volume 2 cancels volume 2, so this variable cancels away, leaving behind just this one, and thus the final version is P1 V1 over V2 equals P2. Then, after that, I can plug numbers into this and solve it on the calculator, and it is very important to do this before plugging numbers into the equation. You want to do this with just the variables, not with a bunch of numbers. So, um, Let's look at another one. Okay, supposing you want to find, let's say you have something a little more complicated like this, where you have things divided and things multiplied, okay? Or rather, uh, you have something divided by something else. In a situation such as that, let's start simple-ish. Suppose you want to find uh, this one right here, the V1. Supposing you want to get that V1 by itself. You want to find volume 1. Well, what you do is... You need to get rid of this T1 right here, and the best way to do that is, okay, we see that's volume 1 divided by temperature 1. So I want to do the opposite of division. That means I'm going to multiply by this. So T1 times that. So I'm times in this by T1 in order to make these cancel out. So T1 goes away, and this is by itself. But whatever I do to one side must be done to the other. So both sides are multiplied by T1. I should make it a little larger so it's clear this is a T1. And this is a multiplication sign, not an X. Um, but at any rate, doing that, what I wind up with is T1 cancels T1 right there. So V1 is all that's left on this side of the equal sign. V1 equals V2 T1 over T2. Okay, and... Um, that would be the final version of this rearranged one if I'm solving for, let's say, V1. So, um, let's see. Well, in this one, I made it fairly simple, just get the one on top. Uh, more likely, if someone's going to make a mistake, oftentimes it has to do with when you're looking for one, trying to get one of these by itself. Let's say you want to find T2. All right, well... Here's what happens, what some people will do. Sometimes people will try and get T2 by itself. They'll be like, oh, I'm going to just divide by P2. And uh, if I divide by P2, uh, one little thing to mention, if I want to divide by something, say P2, that's the same as multiplying by 1 over oops, P2. Okay, really important. So divided by P2 is the same as times it by 1 over P2, okay? So divide by P2, that's what I'm doing right here, and I'll also do the same thing to this side, 1 over P2. So divided this side by P2, cancels, divide by this side, divide this side by P2. Okay, 
a lot of people mistakenly think that this will get you uh, P1 over P2 T1 equals T2. This is what people want to think, but the problem is this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Because the thing is you have not solved for T2. When you do this, you have solved for 1 over T2. So I'm going to write this again over to the side. Here's what you've really done when you've done this. If you divide away P2 and cancel it out, what you've made for yourself is an equation that looks like this. Uh, P1 over P2 T1 equals 1 over T2. Okay, so there is, I should say, this is not T2 by itself. This is not something you can use to find the value of T2. This will not work. But there is a shortcut way to fix this. Um, and it has to do with this. If you have any number, let's say uh, 1 over x is equal to a over b, you can do what I just simply like to call flipping the equation, which is to say, if you flip this upside down, the reciprocal of this is equal to the reciprocal of this. Or another way of saying it, if you flip this upside down, you get x over 1, which is just x. Okay, so I flip this side, it becomes just x. Technically x over 1, but eh, x. If I flip this side, it becomes b over a. Okay? This is equivalent to this. So I can flip this side, but it requires flipping the other side also. So flipping this makes this, flipping this side makes this. Here, I can do the same thing. If I flip this, I get t2. And, but I also have to flip the other side. P2, T1 over P1. Now I have a correct version of this. There is actually yet another way to do this, which I can show you fairly quickly, and it has to do with um, this same property mentioned back up here. If I flip one side, I can flip the other side. Uh, Looking back up here, it was fairly easy, right, to get V1 by itself because it was on top. What if I just flip this to start with so that T2 is on, st on top? Here's what I mean. Flip this side where I now have T1 over P1 and then flip the other side where I now have T2 over P2. This is a valid equivalency. Well, now, if I'm trying to get T2 by itself, I can just times both sides by P2. And if I do that, these cancel, leaving T2 by itself. So I now have P2, T1 over P1 equals T2. And look at that. Notice how it's the same thing. P2, T1 over P1. Okay, it's another way to get to the same answer. So basically, no matter what I do here, I'll probably wind up flipping, it over, flipping the whole equation. I mean, you don't have to. Yet another way to solve this would be to multiply both sides by uh, would be to multiply both sides by this. In fact, uh, here I, it's something I can show you. Yet another way to solve it. Suppose you don't want to flip it upside down. You could take this p1 over t1 equals p2 over t2. You could times both sides by t2. So times t2 times t2. Now you have t2 p1 over T1 equals P2. And then you could multiply both sides by T1. T1 times T1. So now you have T2 P1 equals P2 T1. There, like that. And then you could divide both sides by P1. And this would give you a T2. Let me make sure you can actually see that. T2 is equal to P2, T1 over P1. Okay, but I want to emphasize, even though I've just gone through three different ways to do the same thing, look, the result of this, T2 equals P2, T1 over P1, it's the same as here. I've just got the same answer again. And this also matches here. Okay, so whatever way works for you is fine. It's a way that works for you, okay? Because in the end, it doesn't matter how you rearrange the equation and as long as it's algebraically valid. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. And let's look here. 
personally, I find it nice and easy to just flip it up. So that I'll do with this next one here. Because let's say I want to solve for, this looks nice and complicated, right? Sure, let's solve for one at the bottom. How about uh, T1 right here? Yeah, let's solve for T1. All right, I'll start by uh, making it easy on myself. Flip the whole thing over upside down. So that means this is now on top, T1, these are on bottom, P1, V1 equals, and I'll flip this over also, T2 over P2, V2. All right, well then, uh, trying to get T1 by itself, so I'll times both sides by P1, V1, P1, V1 times this, sees these cancel, and times this by P1, V1 also, giving me a final version of T1 equals T2, P1, V1 over P2, V2. There's other ways to algebraically rearrange this. There certainly is not the only one, but this is one I happen to find particularly convenient. Um, any of the three ways I showed you with the previous question would also work here as well. Okay, now um, looking at this one, if I want to solve for either of these bottom ones, it would work the same way as these up here. And I want to emphasize that in, in light of all that, nothing has changed about the way you solve for the ones on top. Like, uh, let's say you want to find V2 right here. If you want to find V2, it is times both sides by N2. And what you wind up with is N2 V1 over N1 equals V2. Okay, fairly straightforward. Nothing, and so basically what I'm saying is all this changed nothing. You still solve this just the same way. Um, this would work in exactly the same way as any of the rest of these. Any of the ones you want to solve for, the math is the same. So, uh, which one? Uh, I pick uh, why not this one. Hmm? So suppose you want to solve for volume. Okay, you just divide both sides by pressure. So the pressure cancels here. Thus, volume equals nRT over P. Okay, so uh, the actual algebraic process of solving this, once you kind of get the hang of it, is basically it is the same across any equation. Now, just for practice's sake, here, let me give you some ones to practice on, some blank questions, and I'll, I'll indicate a variable that you should solve for, and go ahead and try this out. So, here, some practice equations. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put these up for you to see and try out, and then I'll put the answers up. So, um, I'll scroll all, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, there's six of them, okay? So, I'll scroll all six past, pause the video, write them down, and try them out, and then I'll put the answers up. So, there's first three. Here's some more. So those arrows are pointing to, uh, you know, go ahead and solve for the variable that the arrow is pointing to. Or you can solve for any others if you like for practice. But the, the one the arrow is pointing to, that's the answer I'm going to show you. Okay, so again, copy these down, pause, and practice. Now, here comes the answers. Okay, here's for the first three. And let me make sure that the thing is visible to you, the viewer. Okay, here I've got a V1 equals P2, V2 over P1. V2 equals T2, V1 over T1. Um, here you see I chose the flipping both sides thing. So this flips over to become this. This flips to become this. Multiply both sides by P1 with P1 canceling here. And uh, thus giving T1 equals this. Okay, second three. With this first one, I decided going to be solving for T2, so I flipped the whole set of equations. Multiply both sides by what's on bottom, so I'm trying to get T2 by itself, so I need this. So I multiply both sides by this in order to make these go away. So P2, V2, both sides multiply by P2, V2. And that's why the final answer looks like that. 
Okay, and uh, as for the other two, I multiply both sides by n1 in order to get this by itself. And here I've divided both sides by nt in order to get r by itself. All right, there we are. Okay, now don't hesitate to try out some more just to make sure that you have this down. And of course, go back, review your notes and examples in the textbook, not to mention various examples online um, for practice to make sure you truly master this skill. So there you are. Happy studies.